Hello, and thanks for tuning in for a yin yoga practice. Uh, today, we will focus on the hips and the hamstrings. So go ahead and grab any props that you like to have around for a yin practice. I suggest a couple of blocks, maybe some big thick books or pillows, blankets, that kind of thing, cushions, anything that you might have to make yourself a little more comfortable. Uh, this practice is gonna be done primarily either seated or on our knees. So be prepared for that as well. And in a yin practice, we do some long holds. So today, uh, looking at anywhere between two and four minutes for some of our postures today. Um, let's just begin in a comfortable seat, just sitting up tall. We'll take just a couple of minutes to settle in and to check in. So as you sit tall, Let's take a full deep breath in through the nose. And as you exhale, sigh it out. And just let go of all of those things holding your attention from your day so far. Let's do that again. Deep breath in and sigh it out. Good, now softly close the lips. Just take a moment to scan your body head to toe. Notice what's going on in your inner landscape today. What is it to be in this body in this moment? Tune into any sensations you feel in the legs, in the feet, in the hips, the spine, the shoulders. And then dropping in a little bit deeper, what else do you notice? Any lingering emotions or thoughts? And we're not judging anything we discover. We're just discovering, just so we know our starting point today. And let your awareness now rest with your breath. Just watching the breath as it moves in and as it moves out. And you can add some control to the breath if you like. Either settling into a soft ujjayi breath or maybe just samavritti or even pace breathing. You're inhaling about five counts and exhaling about five counts. Find something for you that works for you to keep your attention on the breath. The name of the game, the theme today for our practice is surrender and letting go. Our practice will primarily focus on hips and hamstrings. So we're going to be doing a lot of leg work. Um, and oftentimes when we release tension from the hips and the legs, because it's such a big like storage depot in our body, emotions and thoughts can kind of come up. So just be aware of that and remember that our intention today or my intention for you for our practice is letting go. So when something comes up, rather than getting really attached to it, can you just acknowledge and just let it go? Just like clouds floating through a clear blue sky. Just letting go of everything, of expectation, just surrendering today so that change can happen. All right, let's blink your eyes open and we'll take our first shape. So our first posture, we'll call it a, a cross leg forward fold. So we'll take the legs and extend them straight out. Now, if your legs don't go completely straight, that's totally fine. You can certainly have some bend in the knees. You could even, if you had a rolled up blanket or a towel, roll it up to support under the knees. But what we'll do here is take the right ankle and cross it over the top of the left one. So right ankle crosses over the top of the left. Of course, you can also sit up on something. I'm just kind of moving my flesh out of the way so I can sit a little more grounded. 
And I will be using my timer today, so I'll be looking at my, my watch quite a bit. But from this cross leg position, inhale, lengthen the spine, and then lengthen your heart forward. Just kind of stretching the heart forward just until you feel some sensation. And once you feel the sensation, can you just settle in and let go? In yin, we do our best to soften and release into the postures. And remembering that less is more. Right? We'll be holding the postures for longer. So if you go to the very edge of what you can handle right away, sometimes it's kind of like jumping off a cliff. We can't sustain it. So find the place where you first feel sensation and settle in there. Notice where you're sensing and feeling not only in the body, but emotionally, mentally, right? Just getting your starting point from this posture, from this shape, probably feeling some good amount of stretch in the back of the bottom leg, which should be your left leg here back of the back, back of the left leg. And then because of the cross here, you might also feel some sensation and stretch in the lower part of your back, primarily probably on the right hand side here. as you settle in and find stillness, come back to the breath. It's almost like we continue through each posture to cycle through physical sensation. Make sure you're not tensing, tightening, or holding. Notice if emotions and thoughts come up. And rather than getting attached to them, can we just kind of put them on a little cloud and let them float on by? Just let it go, at least for now. And then always coming back, right? Just cycling back through. Notice physical sensation. You'll probably feel that the longer that we hold the postures, the more release there is that over time you'll, you'll feel the body tissues just soften and relax and you'll drop in a little bit deeper effortlessly. We'll be here just a little bit longer, about two more deep breaths. Good, one more deep breath here. And then on and inhale, bring yourself all the way up. I'm using blocks for that. I'm going to set them off to the side. Keep your left leg extended, bend your right knee and bring your right foot to the floor outside the left hip. Now, if this doesn't work for you, bringing it to the outside, you can certainly bring that foot inside the knee as well. What we'll be doing here is a little twist as a release and we'll twist to the right side. So inhale up tall, either use left hand or left elbow to hug around the right knee and then twist yourself around. Should feel really great in the spine. Now we won't be holding this one as long. Just a few breaths here. All right, more than a few actually. Let's take four more breaths from here. Remember less is more. Less is more in surrendering and letting go. Good. 
twists. Inhale, we'll untwist. Let's take just a nice counter twist the other direction. Oh, that feels great. Extend the right leg out now and cross the left ankle over the top of the right one. And we'll repeat that forward fold and the twist on this side. Again, adjust any props that you're using to support your body. I'm gonna bring my blocks back in because I thought they were really great for resting the arms on. Let's inhale the spine up nice and tall. And on exhale, the heart reaches forward, extending and lengthening. And remember going just to that place where you first feel sensation and soften in, relax there. naturally relax and soften. So we're not gripping, we're not holding, we're not pulling ourselves into this posture. We're just settling in. Maybe even tuning in physically to the shape and form that your body takes at the beginning of the posture compared to where we end up after a few minutes. surrendering fully so the change can happen. All those thoughts, those worries, those plans. Try not to get attached and just set that stuff on a cloud and let it float on by. You get distracted when the mind gets busy again. Keep coming back to your breath. Keep cycling through physical sensation, thoughts, emotions, and then settle on the breath. A little bit longer. Let's take two more deep breaths. On inhalation, you bring yourself all the way up. Move your props and we'll take that twist. So the left knee bends, either left foot to the floor, inside the knee or outside or inside the hip outside. Up really tall in the spine, right hand or right elbow is gonna hug around that knee. Left hand is behind to support. Inhale up tall and twist. Three more breaths, please. Um, inhale, untwist yourself. Take that counter twist going the other way. And inhale, bring yourself up feet to the floor. We'll come to lying down on our backs for the next couple of postures. So go ahead and lie all the way down onto your back. And as we come onto the back, first posture we'll take here and we'll do several all on the same side again. 
So we'll do reclined pigeon or a reclined figure four stretch. So you'll pick up the right foot, right ankle will go just above the knee. Keep the foot flexed, like flexed minimally, especially if you have any knee discomfort. All right, now options from here, you could keep the foot on the floor, or if you want more stretch than what this is providing, you can pick up the left foot and take the hands behind the thigh. All right, find something that's going to work the best for you. And we'll just settle in here. Bring in any props that are appropriate for you. That's a great variation of this posture, um, actually using the wall where if this left foot is lifted, you just rest it up on the wall. And take time to find your sweet spot. I notice for me that if I just tilt my hips like maybe an inch to the left or an inch to the right, I can really find this place where it's like, oh yeah, that's the spot that we need to be working today. So wherever you are, that left leg is the left thigh is moving in closer to the chest. And you might even be able to use the right elbow or the right forearm to push that right knee away. It's just an option, right? We don't need to. Surrender in here, release. Release and let go. Scan the body physically. Notice what else comes up emotionally, mentally, thoughts. Remember, we're not getting attached to that stuff today. Just put it on the cloud and let it float on by. Come back to the breath. Come back to physical sensation. Let's change this up a little bit. If you have the left foot lifted, lower it back down to the floor. Now we're gonna keep our legs crossed in this figure four shape. Release your arms either out like a T or a cactus. So we get some opening through the upper body as well. And now we'll lower both legs to your left. So the right foot stamps right down to the ground. Now there's a tendency here for this knee to drop forward towards your chest. For today's practice, press that knee up. This will give you this really great stretch deep into the right hip socket. Notice how I'm using my left hand just as kind of like a little kickstand to keep the knee up and lifted. Maybe that works for you. If you don't need it, just lower the arm down. You can add more twist here as well. Maybe you like to turn the um, head away from those knees, so over to the right. And notice where you feel all that, that great stretch, that sensation. And as you scan through the physical body, ensure that we're not gripping and holding around the sensation doing our best to soften and relax, to surrender. So the letting go can happen. So the change can happen. Let's take three breaths more here. Okay. 
And then on the inhale, we'll untwist, move back onto your back. Staying on the right side, let's just hug the right knee in toward the chest and we'll take a half happy baby. So with the knee into the chest, now let the knee move out wide. So we're kind of drawing the knee and the thigh down outside the ribs toward the floor. You might just stay here, right? Just grabbing onto the knee, to the shin, to the back of the thigh. You could also take sole of the foot toward the ceiling, grabbing onto the ankle or outer edge of the foot. Another option from here, either the left foot stays on the floor or you could certainly extend that left leg out. Notice where you're gripping, tightening, holding. Surrender, soften, and relax. Let's take five more breaths, please. We'll release the half happy baby. Stretch your right leg out. I'm gonna scooch down my mat. Stretch your right leg out next to the left. Staying on this right side, we've got one more posture, one more shape. We'll take banana asana, one of my favorites. All right, so we're lying down. Keep both hips and both shoulders grounded. Take your left leg and just slide it out to the left. And then take your right leg and slide it out to the left. So both legs are out to the left. So we're starting to kind of make this C curve, this banana shape with our body. Now, you might add the upper body by taking the arms up overhead and then shimmying your upper body also to the left. So making a bigger C curve. Any shoulder issues, feel free to leave one or both shoulders down or both arms down, okay? And then as we start to settle in here, there are some additions, some changes, some modifications that we could make to the shape. You could take your right ankle and cross it over the top of the left. Remember, just like we did for that forward fold earlier. Now, some people prefer to go the other way. Take the left leg on top, right? Whatever works best for you, whatever gives you the best, um, best sensation. I'm going to go back to right over left. You could also take your left hand and catch onto your right fingers or wrist. Just kind of hold everything in place. It's just really wonderful to open the whole length of the body at one time. So you might feel this stretch all the way from the outer ankle, the knee, the outer hip and thigh, the side of the waist, the rib cage, the armpit, the back of the arm. So take some deep breaths as you rest and melt into this posture.
Let's take three breaths more, please. Let's inhale and slowly bring yourself all the way back to the center of your mat and just pause in a little mini Shavasana right in the center. And as you're resting, before we go to side two, tune in. Like, what are you noticing? What are you noticing physically in your body? I have this really strange sensation that the right side of my body is really long and the left side kind of feels bunched up and small. My right side also feels heavier, more grounded, more at ease. Maybe you're feeling some of those things as well. So let's even ourselves out today, shall we? All right, so back to the beginning of that sequence of four postures. Feet come to the floor, knees are bent. Flex your left foot as you pick up left ankle and cross it over the top of the right knee. And then you decide where to go from here. Take up wall space. Maybe you could actually even put your uh, right foot and elevate it up on something or bring the leg all the way up so you interlace hands behind the thigh. And then remember to take a moment and find your sweet spot, right? It might not be where you first arrive. It might be just tilting maybe an inch to the right or an inch to the left. I find here that if I tilt just a little bit to the right, and it's not even a noticeable, um, noticeable tilt, but I'm just kind of rolling to the right, just like an inch. It gives me a much better sensation kind of found in my sweet spot and that outer hip on the left side. Remember, if you have any knee pain or discomfort, keep your left foot flexed the whole time. That'll, that'll give you some muscle energy to protect the knee. As the right thigh draws closer, you might be using the left elbow to, to gently press left thigh away. Breathing into and through any sensations. Thoughts and emotions that come up that might linger. Go back to placing them on a cloud and just let them float on by. Let them go. One more breath here, guys. All right, what comes to the floor? Keep the legs crossed and in this shape. We'll take that figure four twist. So drop both knees to your right, stamping the left foot down and then pressing the left knee up. So again, rather than letting it drop towards you, press that knee up. It'll give us this really great sensation, <laughs> at least I think it's a great sensation, deep into um, the hip socket over here on the left side. Make any, any other adjustments that you like. And as you settle in, when you scan the body, if there's any places that are gripping, tightening, holding, and sometimes we do it without even realizing. As I kind of went through and checked my body, I'm, I'm like gripping over here on the, on the right leg. So I just needed to soften and relax, surrender. Mm. Whew. That allowed me to get a little bit deeper into the left hip socket.
sometimes when we, even if it's unconsciously tighten the body in that way, in a posture, it can actually bring about um, sharp sensations sometimes. Because we're holding, we're gripping. See so if you can soften, surrender, and relax. Let go. We've got two more deep breaths here. On an inhale, slowly untwist yourself, <clears throat> uncross the legs. Now we take that half happy baby. Left knee is gonna hug into your chest, start there. And then let the knee left thigh move out wide. So we're drawing it down outside the rib cage. And then from here, lots of options. You stay right here. Maybe this works for you. Just letting the thigh come down out wide. Maybe you take soles of the sole of the foot to the ceiling, holding onto the back of the thigh, to the ankle, outer edge of the foot, and offer it on other side. But you know, you can always do like peace fingers too around that big toe. deciding then whether you stay right here with the right foot on the floor or stretch the right leg out. Any of those options are appropriate. And when you can tune in and discern in your body what you need in this moment, right? What option works best for you? Each time you do that, you strengthen your mind-body connection. Just the same as when you notice that your mind has wandered by coming back to the breath. Each time strengthening mind-body connection. strengthening our powers of concentration and mindfulness, choosing what the mind is busy with. Rather than letting it go off on its own. <laughs> Let's take three more deep breaths here. And we'll release the left foot and stretch the legs all the way out. So two legs stretch down your mat. And now we'll take our Manana Asana. So right leg, remember hips and shoulders both stay down. Right leg's going to slide out to the right. And then the left leg is going to slide out to the right. So already we're starting to make this C curve shape, right? Stretching the left side. If you want to add the arms, they go up overhead. And then we might even shimmy the upper body over to the right as well, increasing that C-curve shape. And then allow yourself a moment to settle in before you decide whether you take any of those other options. This side of the body might be completely different, different experience. So settle in couple breaths and then decide or try out your options. Maybe you take the left ankle over the right knee or the right over the left. Remember, it doesn't matter. Maybe you take the right hand and catch hold of the left fingertips or wrist.
three more breaths, please. And on inhale, just release, exiting the posture, making your way back to the center of your mat with your arms by your sides. One more little mini shavasana, just allowing the body to rest. And as you tune in, hopefully what we're tuning into is better balance left to right. Let's make a change in our shape. Bend your knees and then hug them into your chest. Rock her a little bit side to side. Oh, that feels great on the low back. Let's roll over to one side or rock them forward and back on your spine. Either way, bring yourself all the way up to all fours. And I'll be bringing my blocks with me. We'll be taking a dragon series. So bringing the blocks up on either side of the mat, flipping over onto all fours. We'll do dragon series and we'll start with the right foot forward. So we're working with the left hip. So right foot will come forward, left knee down. So bring in any props that you like. Maybe you like to have something under the uh, back knee just for a little extra cushioning. And we'll start in what's called baby dragon. So hands will be on either side of the front foot, whether they're directly on the floor and you're resting the chest on the thighs or you bring in the blocks and you rest the hands there. I'm gonna use my blocks today. And the right foot is forward enough so that the knee is over the ankle. If we're not shooting that knee all the way forward and that when you shift the hips forward, we're feeling stretch in the front of your left hip or thigh. All right. It doesn't mean that's the only place that you're going to feel a stretch, but that's kind of our target area right now. And so just settling in. You know, just because of the sheer nature of this shape, there's usually a good amount of muscle energy, right? Holding us up here. So really doing your best to surrender, to soften and relax. Especially in the areas that we're stressing, right? And the stress is a good kind of stress, right? But we still want to make sure that we're not tightening, tensing, and holding in the areas of the hips. That's where we really want to soften, naturally relax, release, and let go. Remember, less is more here. <laughs> Couple breaths more. And let's transition into a low dragon from here. So the right foot will walk out to the right so that you can set both hands inside the knee. Now, this is what I really like the blocks for, is to come down to low drag, and I can take the pressure off my wrists and just bring forearms down to the blocks. So if you don't have blocks, if you've got a good firm cushion or a couple of big books or something like that, those work really great here as well. 
So now coming into low dragon, and you probably feel that stretch even shift a bit. You might feel it in a little bit different area here. So when I come into the low dragon, not only do I feel the stretch in the front of the left hip, but I'm feeling it a little more deeply as well on the right side. That doesn't mean that if you don't feel that, it's not right. right? Every body is a little bit different. So just let go of expectations of what you think it should be and just let it be. Let's start to transition into winged dragon. Now I'll keep my left elbow, my left forearm down. Take your right toe, ankle and knee and turn it out to the right. All right, so as you turn it out to the right, we get into what's called winged dragon. So I'm just gonna switch sides for a moment so you can see a little bit better on side one here. So in winged dragon, toe, ankle, and knee are to the outside. And you can almost even twist yourself in a bit. And the hand might be on the inside of the knee. You don't have to add the twist. You could just be right here with the elbows down. There's a bit of exploration that happens with yin, actually with, with all yoga postures, but especially with yin, I think it's because, you know, we're, we're holding these shapes for a bit longer. It allows us to really um, explore the sensations. a little bit longer, just two more breaths. We'll start to transition out of this. Now, we're not gonna take the right leg back quite yet. What you will do is turn the toe, ankle, and knee so they're facing forward again, and then walk them back over to the left. So they're right about where we started with baby dragon. And now take that right foot and just walk it forward a couple of inches. So it's just in front of the knee. Then we'll shift the hips back and lengthen the right leg out in front of you for like a runner stretch or a half monkey god, Arda Hanuman. Again, I'm using the blocks because um, I like the support that they provide. You could certainly just have hands down on the ground I also like to bring my hands out closer toward the foot. So it's more of like a stretch forward, but you don't need to. You could have the hands back a little bit farther as well, closer to the body. It's getting this really great stretch now to the back of the leg. The hamstring, maybe even kind of feeling that connection where the hamstring and the glute meet. You might feel this behind the knee. And depending on if you're flexing or dropping the right foot, you might also feel it in the lower leg, the calf, the Achilles. Let's take two more breaths here. Inhale, shift your hips forward and take the right leg, draw it back. 
Let's take child's pose, just as a little break between sides. Hips back to the heels, either let the forehead rest or stack the hands. Might even be tuning in again, differences side to side in the legs and the hips. Reconnecting with your breath. Make a connection with your breath here. It can carry you through the second side of those hip flexors. So let's bring yourself up to all fours and left foot forward this time. So left foot comes forward, wiggle it forward enough again so that you're feeling sensation in the front of the right hip, but the knee is pretty well supported over the top of the ankle. Hands on either side of the front foot to begin with, either using blocks or the floor, and just settle in for a baby dragon. Easing our way into the hips. Let's take three more deep breaths here. We'll transition now to the low dragon. So the left foot's gonna walk out to the left, just enough so that you can bring both hands inside the knee. We still have the knee and the toes facing forward. And then if available to you, come down onto the elbows or elbows on blocks or elbows on books or elbows on cushions. Just come down a little bit lower. Always come back to physically scanning the body. Are you gripping, tightening, holding? Can you soften and release? We might have that same kind of gripping or holding, even in emotions and thoughts. So as you notice these things, remember our intention today is letting go. Surrender naturally soften and relax. Let's take two more deep breaths here. And then we'll turn left toe, ankle and knee out to the left for our winged variation. So you can just kind of let that thigh and knee drop out wider to the left. Maybe you stay right here on the elbows, on the hands, however you are positioned in the upper body, or you can twist toward that knee. This is getting really deep into that hip flexor, especially that upper hip flexor. But remember, just changing the shape, you might feel it in other places too, maybe. Inner thigh, groin, even still the hamstring on that left side. Wow. <sighs> 
One more deep breath here. We'll start to release. If you twisted, untwist. Turn the left toe, ankle, and knee back to facing forward, and then walk it over to the right a bit. So we're back to that first variation, kind of like our baby dragon. Then we walk the left foot a few inches forward. And finally, we sink the hips back, lengthening the left leg out in front of us. And it will fold over that leg. Just allow yourself to kind of melt over the front leg, releasing any residual holding and tightness. One more deep breath here. Shift your hips forward and take the left leg back. Child's pose once more. Just for a few breaths, maybe about five breaths. So if the forehead comes to the floor, great. If it doesn't, that's fine. Stack the hand, bring in a block. We've got one pose left, and it's the most important one, and sometimes inarguably the most difficult. <laughs> what a build up, right? It's Shavasana. So go ahead and lie down on your back. Just flip yourself on over, and actually, on your way there, hug your knees into your chest. Oh, let's give yourself a nice squeeze in. Mm. Maybe even rocking a little side to side, noticing the broadness, the spaciousness in your low back now. And then as you're ready, extend the legs for Shavasana. Let the feet fall open, arms by your sides, palms turned up, and soften and close the eyes. Shavasana, the ultimate surrender. So one more time, just scan physical body, emotional body, mental, just notice what's there now, or maybe tuning into what's not, right, with all that letting go. And then once more, make a connection to your breath. Just watching the breath. And each breath ushering in a deeper sense of relaxation. In closing in Shavasana, I would like to share a poem with you. It's by Dana Falls, and it's called Let It Go. Let it go. Let go of the ways you thought life would unfold, the holding of plans or dreams or expectations. 
let it all go. Save your strength to swim with the tide. The choice to fight what is here before you now will only result in struggle, fear, and desperate attempts to flee from the very energy you long for. Let go. Let it all go and flow with the grace that washes through your days, whether you receive it gently or with all your quills raised to defend against invaders. Take this on faith. The mind may never find the explanations that it seeks, but you will move forward nonetheless. Let go, and the wave's crest will carry you to unknown shores beyond your wildest dreams or destinations. Let it all go and find the place of rest and peace and certain transformation. Let's take a full deep breath in here. Pause at the top of the inhale. And then as you exhale, let it all go. Let the next inhale call the energy back to the body. Wiggling fingers and toes. Just bringing yourself back to your usual state of alertness. And as you're ready to move more, you might hug the knees into the chest, rock a little side to side. And eventually bring yourself up to sit, sitting up tall, maybe even with eyes still closed. And we'll join hands in Anjali Mudra, palm against palm in front of the heart, bowing chin to your chest, closing with gratitude, gratitude to yourself for taking this time for you to let go today, to surrender. And I thank you for sharing your practice with me. Namaste. See you next time.